Hi guys, I'm Randy and today on BRS TV we're setting up the Apex EL Aquarium Controller which is the exact same as Neptune's flagship Apex without ORP, salinity and 0 to 10 volt control. So if you don't need any of those, this is a great deal to not only allow us the on-the-fly control over the most commonly used reef gear for life support, but to also allow instant notifications, emails, and text alerts should our tanks fall out of normal parameters, as well as be able to do something about it, all without breaking the bank. Today we'll discuss how adding a controller and connecting your gear to one control center can help to make your tank safer, more intelligent, and easier to use by walking you through some simple setup, ongoing use, and some maintenance steps. Adding a controller to your tank really comes down to three main desires that many reefers who use them share. First is ultimately making your tank safer, not only for the tank and inhabitants, but also for your home as well, in order to protect each valuable investment. Second is making the tank more intelligent through the addition of multiple layers of redundancy, alerts, and allowing the system the ability to automatically react to specific parameters and tank conditions, and finally to make the tank easier to run overall by having immediate control over your tank's most valuable equipment right at your fingertips through your computer, tablet, or mobile device. With these goals at heart and with the average reefer's wallet in mind, Neptune offers the Neptune Apex EL, which may not include all of the bells and whistles out of the box as its bigger brother, the full Apex, but is still packed with all of the same cloud-based functionality, wired or Wi-Fi connection options, and alert notifications, and does so at a more affordable price point, saving you about 300 bucks. That means with the Neptune Apex EL, you can add control, redundancy, and monitoring to your tank at a fraction of the cost. That also allows you to add those additional features and much more down the road to meet the evolving needs of you and your tank. Let's take a look at what you'll get with your Neptune Apex EL, which is very simple with a couple of probes, a standard energy bar 832, and an Apex EL base unit. Starting with the base unit, you'll see it has two Aquabus ports for connecting to the energy bar and adding on optional modules, ports for the temperature probe and pH probe, an Ethernet port for a direct wired connection, an input-output port for accessories like the breakout box, and finally an auxiliary port and a reset button. The base unit follows the same footprint as the full Apex, which measures at about 5 inches tall, under 4.5 inches wide, and about 3 inches thick. It also has a hinged mount that makes it very simple to access all the ports, which also allows you to tuck them out of the way when done. Next is the standard energy bar 832 that has a removable mounting bracket, eight individually controllable 7 amp outlets, which you can also monitor the power draw or energy consumption for each one, and three outlets for one link powered accessories that not only control equipment like the Neptune wave pumps or dose with a single cord, but also provides them with power to save you valuable outlets for other essential reef gear. The EBA32 also has two 24 volt DC accessory power ports for optional equipment like the PMUP or solenoid for an ATO, as well as three Aquabus ports for connecting to the base unit and expanding down the road with additional modules. Finally, the Apex EL comes with two of the most essential monitoring probes with a robust temperature probe, as well as a high quality double junction pH probe with two packets of calibration solution to get you started. On top of that, you get a six foot Aquabus cable and mounting screws for the base unit and the Energy Bar 832. Let's quickly talk about installing the Neptune Apex on your system, and for physical installation, you'll want to find a spot that's free from splashes or salt creep. We found that mounting everything to a separate board next to the tank or sump not only kept our equipment safe, but also helped to keep everything organized and sleek looking. If you like what we did, all you really need to do is go get a piece of shelving from your hardware store, map out where you want your equipment to go, drill holes for cord management, and use something like these cable management grommets for a desk. Also, I found it very helpful to photocopy or even trace the mounting bracket for the energy bar in order to have a template that's easy to line up for that perfect fit, or you can use the printable templates from the Neptune setup page. Just keep in mind that you will want to account for the extra inch or two to be able to lift the base unit and energy bar up and off of the mount. Once your Apex is mounted, you're ready to get it hooked up to your home's internet and set up following Neptune's easy to navigate setup process. Neptune makes the initial setup of your Apex EL very easy with a step-by-step -step process on their online get started guide, which walks you through the components that come with the Apex EL, getting it connected via Wi-Fi or hardwired connection, and ultimately helping you program your equipment regardless of your level of familiarity with the Apex programming from newbie to expert. 
With that in mind, rather than bore you with the same extended setup process we've already covered in previous videos, let's go over a quick overview of the Apex Fusion dashboard where all of your tank's data and outlet control can be found and some quick tips to help you navigate to some of the core features. By far one of my favorite additions to the Apex Fusion over the years is the Tasks Function page, which is where you'll find nearly all of your programming and setup needs in super simple steps that can be completed with a few clicks of the mouse. To find the Tasks page, you can either choose the icon in the upper left screen that looks like a clipboard and a piece of paper, or choose the Home drop-down menu and select Tasks. Here you'll find all of the most common setup tasks like adding a heater, configuring a light, setting up a return pump or skimmer, and even temperature and pH probe calibrations. You can also use these tasks to set up alarm and alert parameters to keep you informed of how your tank is running in real time with tasks like the power usage alarms that can tell you when your equipment is over or under drawing power, which may mean that they have failed, or probe alarms where you can set up alerts to your phone or email if your temperature probe reads the water temp outside of your desired range. To give you a quick example of how easy setup can be with one of these tasks functions, when you choose the heater setup option, you'll see that it only takes six steps to complete, where you'll choose the outlet your heater's plugged into, rename it if you'd like, choose the temp probe that will control your heater, and finally set up your minimum temp when you want the heater to turn on, and the max temp that you will want the heater to shut off. It's easy to say that the Apex is well worth the investment, specifically as it relates to keeping you informed and alerted of how your tank is running, or if any issues arise, and in order to set up those alerts, you'll want to check out the settings page found in the top right corner of the dashboard screen. From there you can choose add a notification method via email and popular mobile carriers, or both. This is even more helpful should you have to travel or be away from your tank, or you may have a friend or family member taking care of it, in which case you can add their info into the notification list as well, and simply remove them if later desired. Lastly, although there are still quite a few features for you to navigate and play around with, one that I constantly find myself checking is the Energy Bar 832 status directly on the dashboard, which will give you a real-time view of wattage draw, amperage use, and voltage of all the outlets at once, but you can click on it to show each individual outlet's status of wattage and amperage draw and average operating cost, as well as navigate to that outlet if you need to make any changes. In order to get the kilowatt hour cost to show, you will need to add your average cost of energy in your specific area, which can easily be done by clicking on the lightning bolt icon, expanding the power log menu, and entering your information. As with all of the gear we use for our reefs, maintenance is the key to keeping them working for the long haul, and maintenance for the Neptune Apex itself is pretty simple and really only means that you stay up to date with any firmware updates to the Apex itself and to any of its modules. For accuracy and overall longevity of your probes, it's also best to keep them clean and calibrate them occasionally. When cleaning them, you can use some RODI water and a soft brush, and be sure to acclimate your calibration solutions to the tank temp before calibrating the probes. There's a nearly endless list of available accessories for the Neptune Apex, like the Auto Top Off Kit, Fluid Monitoring Kit, Leak Detection Kit, Dose and DDR, PAR Monitoring Kit, Additional, PH, ORP, Temp and Salinity Probes, Lunar Simulator Modules, Automatic Feeders, and a whole lot more to allow you to do nearly anything with this controller. However, my top three accessory choices would definitely be the LDK Leak Detection Kit, which can provide your tank with even more safety and protection against potential tank or sump leaks, the Auto Top Off Kit, which has to be one of the safest ATOs on the market with over three layers of redundant safety measures and alerts, and finally the DOSE, Dosing and Fluid Metering System, which has an adjustable dosing speed to allow you for more accurate dosing of major, minor, and trace elements, or can be utilized for automatic water changes. One last accessory I have to mention, if you're a geek like me when it comes to reef gear, the breakout box for the Apex has got to be one of the most useful but underutilized pieces of equipment that uses all kinds of switches to evolve your tank to become nearly fully automated. Thanks for watching and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.